Hey guys, welcome back to the Nick and Cameron YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video on um, how to change your oil on a 2004 Volvo XC70. You guys have seen this car before on the channel. Um, if not, I have other videos on this car. But I'm going to be going through step by step the process on how to change the oil and then also what tools and types of oil and supplies you're going to need for this vehicle exactly. Um, so I'm going to get right into what tools and supplies you need. Okay, the first thing you'll need for an oil change on a Volvo XC70, or any car for that matter, um, unless it's a truck and you can get underneath it, is I'm going to be talking about the jack and uh, how to get the car off the ground. So uh, I just use a simple floor jack here. Uh, this one's pretty good. Um, <clears throat> this car does weigh uh, about, I believe, 3,600 pounds or something like that. So don't be using uh, like a little Widowmaker jack, um, the ones that you can use to change spare tires. You're going to be needing to go under the car fully and I recommend using a stable floor jack. Um, and then I also use both axle stands. Um, cannot stress this enough, use these guys. Uh, there's been too many stories of jacks failing or whatever. I'm not too actually worried about that as this is a pretty new jack, but um, this is just a safety precaution that everyone should take. And I recommend um, using them. And then also I'm gonna be putting some wood under these because uh, they will sink into the asphalt, kind of dent the asphalt. Um, when the weight of the car is on them and uh, you just don't want to damage the asphalt um, And then also on the jack itself. I'm going to be using a wood block when I'm jacking this thing um, on top of the jack pad to uh, So there's no metal on metal contact. This one has a rubber pad But uh, there's still metal right there and I don't want to scuff up or uh, mar anything under the car I'm gonna be jacking it up on the subframe by the way um, because I don't really like the side rails or the pinch welds on this car. I don't know, they're just kind of hard to, it always seems like I'm breaking them. So I just use the subframe and you can still totally jack the car up fine. Uh, so that's what you're gonna need for jack supplies, getting the car off the ground. Um, and if you guys don't have a jack, if you guys are buying stuff brand new, I actually recommend getting ramps. Um, if you guys don't have any of these tools already, because um, those are super easy. This kind of is a pain in the butt to jack the car up. Um, but you can do a lot more other things because the wheels are off the ground. But um, if you guys have ramps, I recommend using ramps. Or if you guys are just doing this for the first time ever and go, you don't have any tools, then go pick up some ramps. I recommend that you just drive the front wheels of the car up on and then you can do the oil change uh, quite a bit quicker. So uh, next thing up, you're going to need some tools. So this car has a sub, uh, or not sub, has a subframe, but it has a skid plate underneath. And so you're going to need a uh, ratchet for not only taking the old train plug, drain plug bolt out, but you're also gonna need a ratchet and some sockets for taking the skid plate off. So the skid plate is 10 and 12 millimeter, I believe, um, bolts only. So you're gonna need 10 and 12 millimeter sockets. Um, this is a three inch ratchet. I think I'm gonna be using this one for the whole thing. And then I believe the oil train plug bolt itself is an 18 millimeter. So this is an 18 right here. I could be mistaken. Uh, just. I'll show you, I'll make sure later in the video when I'm actually taking it apart uh, to tell you guys the correct one, but I believe it's an 18 mil, but I just recommend having a full ratchet set for this and stuff um, to make it easy. Here's a smaller one I like to use. It's my favorite one that I use. Uh, another little quick accessories, paper towels. You're gonna make a mess um, when you don't have like a nice lift and big oil uh, catch, one of those standing ones. So I always make a mess. So I recommend getting just a whole roll of paper towels. I usually end up using like a dozen or so or whatever uh, to clean the oil filter housing and stuff. So I definitely recommend having those on hand. Uh, this is an oil filter wrench. These ones I don't recommend actually. Uh, this one I bought because it was the cheapest. It's from Walmart um, and it was close by and I just needed to do my oil change on this car when I first got it. So I actually recommend the ones that fit over the end of the oil filter housing um, or the strap wrenches. Um, those seem to work better. Um, so uh, this one kind of mars up the plastic housing. Um, and that's just kind of, it works totally fine, but it's just kind of the pain in the butt. And um, so these are basically just huge um, channel locks kind of that uh, grab onto the oil filter housing. But you're going to need an oil filter wrench if somehow the strap ones work good. The ones that go on a drill and go in the, or the ratchet on the end work well. Gloves, this is only one because I lost my other one. Kind of sucks. I recommend using reusable gloves or just those simple plastic gloves for something to deal with all the oil. You don't want that on your skin. Um, this is a ratchet set, like I already said. Uh, these, just for this car specific, 
um, not specific. This won't be for your car. I just have these because uh, one of the bolts on my uh, skid plate broke off, so I just need to cut a zip tie and I always re zip tie instead of a bolt um, because I never had that. I, it was like that when I got the car. And uh, the drills out here, I don't need that right now. That's for something else. But uh, this is the main kind of oil change stuff. So you're going to want to pay attention here because you're going to need uh, 5W30 is the recommended oil for a Volvo XC70. You need 6.1 quarts. Um, <clears throat> so this is a five quart right here. And then this is some leftover from the last oil change. So uh, I recommend picking up two, if you're doing this for the very first time on your car on uh, with this 2.5 turbo. Um, I don't know what the 2.4 turbo, the earlier ones take, uh, how many, how much oil, but I just rec recommend buying uh, two of the five quart ones. It's a little bit more expensive at first, but you're going to have extra oil and then you just need to buy one five quart each time. And then you just use the residual from the first extra one uh, repeatedly until you run out. And then ultimately it's the most cost effective way instead of buying individual quarts each time, because then you actually have to buy seven individual, um, or a five quart and two extra, and you just don't get the best bang for your buck. So I recommend doing that. The oil I'm gonna be using today is Valvoline high mileage. This is the ultra high mileage stuff though for engines over 150,000. You can find the 75,000 mile stuff um, in uh, like Walmart and AutoZone and stuff, but uh, I've only found this on Amazon, but my car has almost 213,000 miles. And um, I recommend using really high mileage oil because it keeps the oil, uh, the really old sludge from building up and stuff. And uh, it also keeps like rubber seals rubbery and prevents them to turning really hard plastic. So uh, if you have really high mileage engine and car, I recommend using high mileage oil. Um, just keeps the engine healthier at the <clears throat> higher mileage. This is the oil filter I'm gonna be using today. This is an STP oil filter I got at AutoZone. Um, this is typically not what I like to get. I typically like to get a little bit better. This is the super basic one um, but it was the cheapest at AutoZone. I ordered a Bosch filter on Amazon that was $11 and um, it was actually broken which really sucks uh, but yeah you're gonna need um, an oil filter here so uh, this is the S8178712. Um, I recommend probably getting a different type just look up uh, 2004 Volvo XC70 oil filter um, you can go to your auto parts store, you can get them online or whatever, but don't, uh, I wouldn't say don't get the Bosch one, but uh, the one that I bought on Amazon was broken, which kind of sucks, so I'm going to be sending it back. So final things you're going to need are a funnel for filling your oil. You don't actually need need that, but uh, this car I use a funnel just because it's easier. Um, it's easier on most every car. And then an oil pan. This one's really grody um, because it sat outside for a while, but this is to catch your oil and I'm going to be setting a big piece of cardboard under the car under this oil oil pan because this one has a really low lip on the side so the it when I pop the bolt and all the oil comes out it always flies off the edge and makes a huge mess on the ground which sucks. So uh, I recommend getting cardboard or something under your oil pan if you have a crappy one like this but if you're actually going out and buying one the first time I recommend buying one with a way deeper edge um, and just this was super cheap. That's why I bought it also. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys next just what to get started, but those are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need your jacking stuff. You're going to need your oil change direct stuff, and then you're going to need a few, a few hand tools and uh, supplies. So I'm going to be getting into what you're going to need to do to start changing the oil next. Okay guys, first thing you're going to need to do, or what I like to do first, is pop the hood. The hood popper down here on a 2004 Volvo XC70 and like all the P2 platform, and like most cars, is down here in the footwell. You pop it once on this car. Some cars require a second pop. And I like to pop the hood before jacking up the car um, because I just don't want to have to get back in the car once I'm all dirty and us on the ground and stuff. And this car has hood struts, so you just pop it open and just I just like to leave it. Oh, what the heck? Seems there's been a mouse or whatever, but um, yeah, so just pop the hood and um, then I'm going to be getting to jacking the car up real quick and I'll show you guys where I like to jack it up from. So I'm under the car now kind of, and this is where I like to jack the car up from. There's a subframe on both sides, uh, mount kind of. This is the subframe itself right there and this is kind of the mount where it joins with this, I don't know, the chassis of the entire car and that's where I like to mount it uh jack it up from because it's all metal 
and I can still take the skid plate. You can see the skid plate. This is what I'm talking about. And um, so I'm not going to show you guys me jacking it up, but I am going to show you guys after um, just because it's kind of hard. Um, but yeah, I like to place the jack right here, jack it up on one side basically until I can get a uh, jack stand under there. Um, and then I'll show you guys where I like to place the jack stands once it's under there um, and it's all jacked up. Okay guys, I just uh, jacked up the car here. You guys can see on this side, the jack is still in that subframe kind of uh, area. I left it there. I'm gonna leave the jack here for ad added security, but this is where I place the jack stands on the subframe. Um, that's, oh, I jacked it up a little too much. I gotta lower it down, you guys can see that. I don't know if you guys can see that gap, but you're gonna want to lower the jack all the way down so it's on the jack stands. Um, and I'll show you guys the spot where I jacked it up. On the other side, you're gonna want to make sure that the jack stands are also even. So just count the notches that they rise up. And I don't know. Hopefully, you guys can see that that's on the subframe there. Um, and now we got extra clearance the wheels are just off the ground it's all cambered out like that because they're up in the air I think this wheel actually has bad camber uh, like positive camber but um, I'm gonna get to work on taking the uh, skid plate off you guys can see that bolt there that mounts it um, and those are all around I think there's maybe eight or six or something so I'm gonna take that off and then I'm gonna go show you guys where the oil pan drain plug bolt is okay guys uh that was the hardest part there this is the skid plate off this is the uh upper side of it so this is the part that actually goes up under the car and this other side is the part that's on you know facing towards the road so i just put the bolts back in the location so they actually all of them go up like that up through the holes but i just put them back in the location so i'm missing this one and the car was missing this one but the whole pan or the skid plate actually fastens well that's the corner that i was talking about that the mount broke off and it's uh, zip tied on so i just cut the zip tie and i gotta put one back but um as you guys can see there's been a little oil seep over the years uh it, it was like this when i've changed the oil before um it's never collected or anything and i looked on the bottom of the side of the plan and it looks really clean on the actual drain plug i think it's leaking from something behind it like the diff or i don't know but um, yeah, this is what the oil pan or the skid plate looks like. So if you have all the bolts, there is uh, seven. Um, and the bolts down here, all of them are 12s, except for this guy in the front is a 13, which is kind of annoying. So all these are 12 millimeter. So you need a 12 and a 13 millimeter socket for all those. So um, next up is gonna be, well, draining the oil. This is where it gets exciting. So uh, first thing up, when you drain the oil though is you're going to want to open up your oil fill cap on the top side of the engine so that um just it can drain out all the way easily so i just opened that up as you can see it's already dirty so i'm gonna show you guys what i set up under there the pan and the cardboard in just a second okay guys i'm under the car now uh the filming is probably going to be kind of tough because i'm going to be doing some work down here but um a little shaky but you guys can see this is the bolt this is the oil train plug bolt it's on the back of the oil pan and it is actually a 17 millimeter um so you're gonna need a 17 millimeter socket for that um i said 18 earlier but this is the setup i have under here so i've got this big cardboard sheet it's kind of hard to see oh my gosh and then the oil pan itself and so it's gonna shoot out kind of that way from you guys can see it it's gonna shoot out like that so that's why I have the oil pan kind of downrange of the uh, drain plug bolt so then I have this other piece of cardboard to just catch any splatter probably still gonna make a mess because this oil pan really stinks so can't stress enough don't get one of these ones with the low lip on the side because the oil just fills up and yeah not a good idea so um, I'm gonna crack the bolt with the socket there and then Loosen it with my glove hand, and I'll try to catch this on camera. I have no idea how good this is gonna be, but um, yeah. Okay guys, uh, I cracked the bolt with the socket. So, uh, oh man, this is gonna be tough filming. 
sorry about this, but I'm going to begin to loosen it. Oh no, this is going to be bad. But yeah, you're just going to hand loosen it because once it's cracked, um, it'll be super loose. Definitely recommend using a glove here. Um, make sure your oil pan is set up correctly. It's really tight under here, so sorry about the filming. It's pretty tight. Uh, I may want to try to like just loosen it a little bit. Once it comes, it comes um, all the way out. So it's going to be, so as you guys can see, it's dripping. Oh man, this is tough. It's dripping quite a bit now. Uh, I'll try to modulate it a little bit so it just doesn't overfill my pan. So I'm going to actually kind of do this for a minute. Um, just because my pan is super crappy and I don't want to make a mess. So I'm going to let it drain out most of the way like this. Uh, like the first half of the oil. And then uh, once it's all drained out, I'll let you guys know uh, what's next. Okay guys, I just ended up pulling the bolt. It made some mess on the back side there. Um, I'm going to have to clean that up. That kind of sucks. But I uh, didn't get on the pavement, I believe, because the cardboard. So I uh, just couldn't hold my arm for that long. <laughs> it was going to take forever. So um, yeah, it's draining out. It's going to take a while. So just don't uh, just leave the, I just leave the drain plug bolt right there in the pan because um, mine's not very deep. But uh, if it's really deep, you might want to set it aside because it'll get lost in the oil and you have to fish it out. But the glove uh, definitely helped. As you guys can see, it was all gross. and. Um, Definitely easier if you have a better pan, drain pan. So um, yeah, I'm gonna let this drain out and next we're gonna get to the oil filter, which is thankfully right here. Um, so uh, I'm gonna let that drain out most of the way and then I'll pull this over here and then we'll do the oil filter. Okay guys, I'm gonna pop this oil filter out. Um, that's the oil filter right there. Uh, these things aren't super tight, so I'll, I'm just gonna use this tool. It's really tight um, and I have to use two hands so I'm not gonna be able to actually film it but I'll show you guys after. Okay guys, I just got the oil filter out. Uh, it's been draining for a minute or so. I made a mess, dropped over there. Thankfully it's filled just a little dabble. Uh, there's some drips right there. Um, but that's what it looks like. Uh, so it's all pulled out. There's the oil filter housing and the old oil filter draining out there. It's still draining, so you wanna leave the oil pan. And as you guys can see, the original one is still dripping from the drain bolt plug uh drain bolt plug um and it's going to drain out for a minute so uh, i'm going to get ready and prep the new oil filter and this is a pretty important step um so stay tuned okay guys i just picked up the oil filter housing here from the drain pan that was sitting in as you guys can see uh the reason i don't like using that wrench that one the claw style one is because it kind of mars up the outside you guys can see it's kind of hard to see in the oil but it's all marred up and i don't really like that this side's all scratch you can see not good but uh that's what i have so that's what i use but you guys can see in there there's a little bit of sludge at the bottom it's kind of hard to tell but uh let's see if i can get my finger in there it's yeah it's a little sludgy that's what it looks like uh that's what the normal oil would look like but so, um, but there's no metal shaving, so that's really awesome. Sorry, it's kind of hard to film. So I'm going to get the oil filter and then show you guys how to put the new seal on, the O-ring and stuff. So, uh, yeah. Okay, guys, now I'm going to show you guys how to get the new oil filter in there. So I don't know if you guys can see, but this, uh, you're going to, I forgot to mention, you're going to need a screwdriver. Uh, for this, a small flatheads screwdriver um, to get the O-ring off. There's an O-ring on there that seals the oil filter um, from. So I put a glove, another glove on, so it's kind of tough to film. So uh, I'm open up the oil filter here. Hopefully you guys are seeing this in the frame. And you guys can see the new oil filter. Uh, it's identical on both sides, so you can put it either in or up like that. But, um, so you're gonna wanna put the oil filter in. And then you're gonna kinda push it down, I guess. I don't know. There's kind of this ring down there. 
that it'll sit on. It doesn't really lock in, but uh, you're going to want to put the oil filter in there. And then, get your glove on. This is kind of a pain in the butt. Get your screwdriver, and there's this O-ring down here. And you're going to pop the screwdriver in there. And then you're just going to take the O-ring off with the screwdriver or your hand. And this is actually probably totally good to use, but you should replace the O-ring every single time because you do not want to be leaking oil. Um, there's this little debris on here. You want to make sure that the mating surface is clean also. So I'm going to wipe that off. And I'm going to be wiping this whole thing off with some paper towels in a second. Probably should actually do that right now. I want to get the paper towels all dirty. As you guys can see, dealing with oil is really messy, and a lot of people just, uh, like mechanics, do it without gloves and stuff, or they just wear those reusable gloves, um, but I don't have those, so, or the disposable gloves. So I'm going to wipe this off here. So you are supposed to take the O-rings and typically get a little oil on the O-ring, and then put them on there, but I'm just going to be filling up so open up your new o-ring it should come with your filter as you guys can see here brand new o-ring and it's going to go on that slot kind of like this on the oil filter so i'm going to kind of start like this this is not that difficult to do But, you want to make sure it's on there good. So it's on there now. It's all the way around. Make sure it's seated properly. And then, what you're going to do is actually fill up some oil in the oil filter so that when you start the car, you're not having all the... <clears throat> well, your dipstick reading will be incorrect because you'll have just the pan oil, or the oil in the pan. But in reality, when the car is running and whatnot, there's always filter uh, oil in the filter. So you're going to want to make sure that um, you fill it up uh, part way with some oil in here so it's prepped and kind of that's best for when you're starting the engine back up uh, after the oil change. Okay guys, uh, put the oil filter back on, um, tightened it down. As you guys can see, there's an old mark there that a previous owner made and uh, it's, it's pretty tight. Um, you'll kind of feel it snug up at the very end where it basically won't want to tighten anymore and that's kind of where you want it. Um, it says 25 newton meters on there, but I don't have a torque wrench, so I don't know for sure. And then the oil train bug bolt I put on, and I basically just tightened it as best as I could with that 3 8 ratchet under here. Uh, you want that thing tight. Uh, I don't recommend using power tools because um, if it breaks off in there, you're basically shit out of luck. Um, but yeah, so it's tightened up under here and everything, so I'm going to... Yeah, I need to get this cleaned up. Kind of sucks. But uh, uh, I'm going to start filling it with oil. Um, and I filled the oil uh, filter housing with, I don't know, probably a half a quart. Or I don't know, probably a little less than that. But um, yeah, I filled that up with some oil, some fresh oil. Um, so you should do that too. Okay, guys, now here comes the easy part. Uh, you want to get your funnel and you're going to start filling your oil. So. The car is still jacked up, so I wouldn't recommend putting all the oil on. This car takes 6.1 quarts of that 5W30. I've already put about a quart in, and I'll probably put about five quarts in worth. Um, <clears throat> because your dipstick readings aren't going to be accurate because the car is jacked up and the oil pan's not level. Um, so I'm going to probably put five quarts in, and then I'm going to put the skid plate back on. And then I'm going to drop the car back down because I'll be don't need the access under the car anymore. And then I'm going to be putting the final oil in and checking the dipstick. Um, so make sure you kind of do that. Um, if you have ramps, then just roll it off the ramps. Or uh, back it off the ramps. Um, and then put the final oil in so you get an accurate dipstick reading. Okay, guys. So um, the car is back lowered down. Filled it up um, the rest of the way with the oil. So uh, you're going to want to check the dipstick as you're filling. Um, as you're coming up to the end, the uh, 6.1 liter. Or quart my bad not liters um and then um once it's all topped up with dipstick when it, you haven't run the car yet 
or anything. Uh, I would recommend running the car for a second and then um, turning it off and then check the oil just to make sure everything's all good and um, you aren't getting like a false reading on the dipstick. Um, so yeah, but the car's all lowered down and uh, just lower down one jack stand at a time. And uh, I mean, that's pretty much it for the oil change on a 2004 Volvo XC70. So um, if you're looking to save yourself some money, I would definitely do um, a DIY oil change yourself. Um, it does take a while. This took me about two hours because um, I was filming and uh, the skid plate is pretty time intensive. It's kind of hard to get onto there and take it off and stuff. But um, yeah, you're probably gonna save yourself quite a bit of money doing this. Um, and uh, I highly recommend trying to change your oil yourself.